All right, buddy, so what's your name and where are you from? My name is Josh Ballot. I'm unfortunately from the town of Oxford, Mississippi. Mississippi. Uh, yeah, you can probably tell by the way I talk, huh? I can't, I can't, man. There's a few states that kind of sound the same, man, when it comes to accent and stuff like that. Oh, man, look, more the regional south, you know. Yeah, yeah. I had a guy on from Mississippi the other day. He had a really, really uh, deep accent. But look, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this story, I think, I don't know how I came across your story. Was it your mom or girlfriend? Who was it that brought it my way, man? Was I know that a, like a couple months ago when I was still locked up on my violation, my wife told me she had messaged you about it. And, uh, oh, okay, and okay. It was my okay. mother-in-law like two days ago, though. Oh, okay, okay. So I probably just didn't see your wife's and magically seen your mom So that's yeah. or mother-in-law. So uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this story's crazy, okay? I'm a gamer. I'm a gamer. And... Uh, you know, I'm going to let you tell it, man. I'm going to let you tell it the best way you possibly can. This is a very wild story, ladies and gentlemen. He ended up doing some fed time. It's crazy. Go ahead, man. I'm going to let you run with it. All right. I guess long story short, I was playing a super nerd game back in 2012. I was 19 years old. I've been playing the game since I was like 11, man. But um, what What's game? It's called RuneScape. <laughs> RuneScape. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you heard All of right. that? yeah, I heard of it. Never yeah, tried it, but I heard a lot about it. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, I was on that game. I probably didn't have no business being on there when I was nineteen, but hey, I'm pretty yeah. I'm pretty well known on it now. But anyways, yeah. man, I was standing in this little marketplace area on the game. A friend of mine, two friends of mine started talking about this other video game that was kinda like making light of a of like a tragedy that had happened in America a couple yeah. years prior. And um I kinda was like, Man, I don't want to play a game that, you know, trivializes something like that, so I'd rather just kinda but Anyways, another player comes up and butts in on our conversation, starts trolling us, calling us dumbasses, telling us not to talk about it and stuff, which is kind of the point that I was making to begin with. So, yeah. um, so I was drinking excessively, which is you know illegal in the USA, being 19. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I was already known for having a pretty smart mouth. I mean, I'd gotten in a lot of trouble uh, yeah. throughout my teenage years. So one thing about it, I'd like to claim, I was never just a model citizen or anything at this point. You know, it kind of led to the the later problems, but. Me being drunk and having a smart mouth and deciding to troll this guy for buttoning on my conversation, man, I, I pretty much told him that I, I'd like to do something like that. You know, just, oh, man, yeah, yeah, and, and mentioned that I'd take him with me and all that. But I was just drunk and just, you know, talking trash. Yeah, yeah I, have people th I have people threaten my life probably 90 times a day in Call <laughs> of Duty. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, exactly. So I understand. Yeah, it's just just normal gamer talk and, and uh, uh, debating, just talking shit. Yeah, you know? trolling, man, just taking yeah. it to the next level every time. Um I mean, I'd seen and said worse than that, you know, but the kid reported yeah. me to the game company. He reported me for breaking the game rules. He was trying to get me kicked off of the game, but instead he got me kicked off of society, I guess, because they called the FBI when they saw it. Oh, my God, man. Yeah. Four days so, later, the bomb squad, the SWAT team, the boys, the helicopter, all that on the roof. Yeah, they came and knocked on the man. That's like, that's crazy, man. That's that's worse than them being swatted. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was, it was an authentic SWAT, you know? Yeah, that was an authentic one. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, those that don't know what swatting is, it's when people get, like, your IP address and stuff like that, and they will make false calls on the gamer, and they'll get swatted, and the cops will show up. It's turned into some major things in the past, but this was authentic, I guess. I'd like to, I'd like to say that I started a trend. I'd just like to put that out there real quick. <laughs> <laughs> trend center, boy, you know? Yeah, by the SWAT team. I know that's right. Uh, so what the hell was going through your mind, man? Did you have any kind of clue that this shit was coming? No, no, not in the slightest, dude. Uh, believe me, I probably wouldn't have been in the house if I had known what was going down. Yeah. Uh, but I, the, the the biggest surprise to me, other than the fact that I mean the FBI was staring me down, was that like I just I straight up had no clue why they were there, dude. I had absolutely no inkling. They asked me actually. The dude was like, "Do you know why we're here, man?" And I was like, "Man, I guess." Uh, you know, I was smoking some weed earlier that day. I was like, I guess you guys smelled that, and you thought that, you know, oh. I was growing, and you're overreacting and just going ballistic. And they were like, no, that's nothing to do with that. You got anything in the house we need to know about? And so I was like, yeah. And I had probably two or three pretty heavy charges worth of drugs. I mean, not, not kingpin or anything, you know, but some, some illicit substances that I was – it was just personal or whatever, but yeah. I ended up – they didn't even actually have a warrant for that, so they I guess they just threw it away, man. I never heard about it. Yeah. But I admitted – I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, they're going to find it. There's 50 dudes crawling over my damn house. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I got this and this and this next to the TV and all that. And they're like, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about any weapons or anything. And I was like, no, man. I don't have any weapons. I don't even have a pocket knife or a BB gun in my house. Yeah. Uh, 
I still didn't really know what was going on until they got me to the federal building place, you know, where they click that lamp on and swing it around in your face. And uh, Oh, I don't know. I've never been there. But, yeah, paint the picture for us, man. What, yeah, they, they, t- they throw you down at the desk with your hands behind your back, and they got, a, they got a real convenient clock that's on the wall, like right about where your face is with a big button right in the middle of it. Yeah, that's not a camera, right? And, oh, uh, oh, okay, so it is a camera. Okay. Oh, okay. yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then uh, they click the lamp on, you know, and swing it in your face, and the dude was like, have you ever heard of an online game called RuneScape? Oh, oh man! My God. I had my did, hands did, that, just, did that whole situation come in your mind when it immediately? When you said that? Immediately, yeah. Because I got I actually got muted on the game for saying it. I didn't get banned or kicked off of it permanently. They just took away my ability to type in the game. So I was like, I thought that was the punishment. You know, I was like, damn, yeah. there goes my RuneScape account. But uh, no, I had a bigger punishment in, in store at that point. Um, at that point, dude, I put my head down on the table and I was like, oh, man, this is about that stupid shit that I said the other day, isn't it, man? And they were like, so you admit that you said it. You were the one that typed those words. That was you. Yeah, is this a confession? You're telling us that you said it? And I was oh, like, oh, my God. I would like to emphasize right now, man, that I was 19 years old. And at this point, I had faith in the justice system in a very naive way that I, I would. So I know is not true. Yeah, anymore, just like the know? normal normal person out there, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The average person probably thinks that only bad guys go to prison, and you have to really mess up, you know. And and so I mean, to be honest with you, they can they slap convinced me out of asking for a lawyer. They told me they said, oh, if you ask for a lawyer, you're just going to be here for four or five more hours, man. And we're just trying to check it out and get you home. And I personally thought the situation was like easily explainable. So. Obviously, I was like, okay, well, I mean, if you guys are trying to keep me here for five hours, then, man, I better not take a lawyer, you know? I'll just tell you what happened, and you guys can send me on your way. I fell for it. I fell for that. You know, they can just say anything they want. And so I was like, yeah, man, I was drunk. We had this argument, man, and it was all just a prank. I just – I'm not really going to do anything. I I don't even have a BB gun in my house. So, like, it's just a prank. Yeah. They were, oh, yeah, man, we get it. We get it. We get it. And then when I get done, I was like, that's about all to the story. They're like, no, we know there's more to the story. We know there's more, and you're going to tell us because we already know. So if you don't tell us, we're going to charge you. You might as well just go ahead and come out with it. Go ahead and tell us. We know. We already yeah. know. And I'm like, what are you? What the hell are you talking about, dude? I don't even know who you guys are. And then they asked me what I was doing at this bar in Oxford a few days prior that I was never at. I'm sitting here going, dude, they, they get they get shit messed up this easily. Like they, they're sitting here thinking I'm a whole different person. I mean, obviously are they weren't you confused serious, about this threat, man? but they started asking me about crimes around Oxford that they said that I had committed, and I was like, I don't, I legit didn't know what they were talking about. I wasn't anywhere near where they said I was at the time. I was hanging out with my girlfriend that whole week, you know? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, man, that, that, that whole little thing about, oh, four or five hours, and we're just trying to get you home. Uh, after that, of course, they said, well, now we're going to take you to county jail. You have to sit there for probably three or four days, and then we'll get you a detention area, and we'll get you right home, bud. I was like, all right, man. Well, I mean, honestly, really, I was like, three days? I don't have three days. Like, I was doing anything, you know? Yeah. But, uh, it was actually 1,795 days later that I actually got released, wow. unfortunately. Uh, what yeah, what county did they throw you into? Lafayette County Detention Center. The rest of the world pronounces it Lafayette, but my county, yeah. for some reason, was real weird. They pronounce it Lafayette, and uh, it's LCDC, as we call it, of course, where I've now spent a collective, I guess, 18 months of my life from that bid and whenever I went back on violation. Uh, and this is uh, in Mississippi? Oh, yeah. Northern was your, was uh, your family home or anyone when the uh, damn team came through? Yeah, I was actually – I just moved back in with my mom. and <laughs> My girlfriend went to go pick up her, uh, not not the girl that's my wife now, obviously, um, but my girlfriend at the time went to go pick up her little sister from daycare, and uh, I mean, probably about five minutes after she left, maybe ten minutes after she left is when I got the, you know, that, that, that cop knock on the door, and I actually, whenever they knocked on the door, I saw something run past my window, and I'd been kind of holed up and just like drinking for a couple of days and not hanging out with my friends, and I figured they were messing with me like ding-dong ditch, you know, knock on the door and run, yeah. and uh, I was like, that was weird. And I get up and I'm walking towards the door and my mom's coming down the stairs across from me like she was going to answer the door, you know, and I was like, I got it, mom, because I just figured it's one of my homies ding dong dish and trying to, you know, come mess with me. And uh, they knocked again real loud. I was like, damn, what the hell? And then I opened the door and freeze, get on the ground, turn around, put your hands up, get on the ground. Oh, my yeah. God. As soon as I opened the door, actually, the first thing that I heard was my school resource officer whenever I was in high school. They opened, I opened the door and I heard, that's him. And then just... <laughs> Oh, damn man. it! The damn school resource teacher dropped yeah. dive on you, man. Yeah, man. The, the, the old officer from the school, man. He had he had already told them. Oh, I know him well, man. I know exactly who that guy is. And oh my! I'm not gonna say God. he would do it, but we must uh, we must take it seriously and go investigate. Later on, after I got out of prison, he actually ran into a friend of mine at Walmart, and she texted me and she said, "Hey, I just saw Officer Thomas, and he wanted me to tell you that he's really sorry about everything that happened. If you need anything, you know, you can just let him know." And uh. I mean, I don't hold any grudge against the guy, man. Uh, I know it was out of his hands at that point. The FBI got yeah. involved. He's a little yeah. local cop, you know. But uh, 
Yeah, a couple days later, I went to my detention hearing. They read my official charges, transmitting threats to destroy buildings by means of fire and explosives, as well as transmitting threats to kill and injure the person of another or induce wow. grievous bodily harm. All Both. over some damn trolling yeah. argument online, ladies and gentlemen. Be careful what you say out there. Shut y'all's freaking mouths. Do not say no crazy shit, man. I know a lot of people might see something that might get through the window, man, but... <laughs> It's not worth it, man. It's not worth it. It ain't risk. worth the try to even joke about some things, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, let me tell you, when you get caught in that FedNet, man, they're not going to let you go. They, no. they don't care. They, they don't. will have eyes on you forever, man. They yeah, will, absolutely. They, they will. Trust me. In some way, shape, or form, not li literally eyes, but you're on that list, my there's friend. Some, there's some monitoring going on. Yeah. And, it's uh, covert, but it's there. Well, tell me, man. Just going to. I mean, so 1,000 some days, that was like. Uh, what, about five like three years. Three year, four years? Okay, okay, okay. I was 30 days shy, five years when I, first, when I finally got out the first time to a halfway wow, house. Wow, man. Unbelievable. Okay, when so when you I was get... 19, it was damn near, you know, it was over a fifth of my life. Yeah, and you've never been to lockup. You probably never thought you'd be going to lockup. Uh, nah, I did a day in county jail before for possession of marijuana when I was like 18. You know, damn, like, they gave you a day yeah. in there for that? That's crazy. I just was having trouble making the bond happen, actually. Oh. That's all it was. <laughs> <laughs> just having trouble making yeah, the yeah, need to get yeah, me yeah. out of there. Okay, so how was county jail in Mississippi? Lafayette, you said? Yeah, we pronounce it Lafayette, like colloquially or whatever, but it, Lafayette's fine. You know, I know that's the proper way to pronounce it. I'm originally yeah. from Lafayette Parish, Louisiana, so I don't know why my town's like an anomaly. But, um, yeah. yeah, man, that was pretty wild, to say the least. Uh, I mean, I was all over the news at that point. Um, at that point, the news coverage was more just like they didn't really know what happened. It was just kind of like, hey, this happened. This dude just got arrested for, like, threats. Yeah. And, um, He's being transferred to local jail. So I was all over the news, and all the guys in my pod were just like, hey, man, that's crazy. That's you right there. You, you were going to do that? And I'm like, do I seem like I was going to do that, man? And they're like, I don't know, man. It's crazy in here. You never know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, still, in general, man, I mean, uh, I got along with everybody pretty well. You know, I never had anybody come and harass me. Pretty much anybody talks to me for about two minutes, and they're like, oh, man, you're just being a little sarcastic ass instead of, you know, being respectful. Well, that's good. You know, at least, at least you're being – believe it or not, man, you come in there and you're a little sarcastic. That might help you, man. You come in there scared as shit, and you know, you know that's how it is, man. You, Absolutely, you know? yeah. You know? We clean, uh, you know. Yeah, so I can understand how your sarcastic responses and stuff could have led you to becoming more fit into the whole environment, man. I really can see that. Uh, were there any situations before we get into the feds, man? Uh, were there any situations? in because you know Mississippi's going crazy right now, man. Yeah, uh, all yeah, they've been rioting and parchment and everything. Yeah, I mean, was there any situations where, you know, you thought you were really at risk or just a crazy situation you might have seen in county? Not not really ever, like, an actual fear for my life or anything like that. You know, the whole time that I was in my county jail, I think that there were, like, two times where somebody had some kind of a weapon, a little ghetto shank that was really more for the more for the wolf ticket than it really was for actually cutting yeah. somebody. You know, okay. they just kind of had yeah. – yeah, exactly. They just kind of had a little something that wasn't even, like, sharp enough. But then they – you know how they put their hand in the waistband right there like they're doing something back all up? Yeah, or like you yeah. said, they get real quiet. I, I like how you said that in your warning signs because you already know that's true. When they, yeah, yeah, you know what? You're right. You're right. Yeah. Some stuff like that, you know. But, um, no, nah, I mean, nothing ever that was, like, life-threatening or anything, you know. I mean, obviously, I had my tussles, but uh, significantly. Anybody try, was, anybody try stealing some some canteen? Nah, man. Uh, not that I'm aware of, but I also didn't really, like, go and direct that much. We had to go up on the roof at, like, 2 in the morning or something. Like, it was, like, it was like 5.30 in the morning, and my sleep schedule got backwards. Um. I mean, there were dudes snaking it. I heard every now and then when dudes would go to wreck uh, when I was normally asleep. But to be perfectly honest, um, I never witnessed it or anything. And I was cool enough with everybody. They know I wasn't a thief. My commissary was okay, you know. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, they were the little – most of the dudes that would still be that kind of person to steal some store were saving all the trays under their bed, you know. Yeah. More so than that. we were the, the main block that I was in in my county jail was normally only 10 people that first time. So, I mean, it was, it was oh, okay. a little more – yeah, it was a little yeah. more – it's kind of hard to get away with stuff. We got all kind of monitor each other. Man, yeah, it was small block, in there, small though. Block. Yeah, but when you're close quarters like that with someone, man, it becomes very nerve-wracking. That's the only good thing about pods and prison. You can make it a little more space between the next guy. But these small 10-man blocks, I mean, you're going to smell it every time someone drops a deuce, you know, yep, or absolutely. Farts. You're going to smell it, you know. That's how no close doubt. you are. So you can get Feet. annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> God, the feet, you know, anything, man, just – 
anything. It, it, it really annoys the shit out of you being close to that many people. A lot of them, you know, uh, annoyed the hell out of me. I couldn't get, I couldn't wait to get away from them. You know what I mean? You heard that uh, phrase, familiarity breeds contempt. I learned that for real when I was in jail. Like, just what was it called? Familiarity breeds contempt. Like, just kind of the more that you see somebody, the better you know them, the more the shit they do gets on your nerves. You yes, know? yes. I witnessed yes, that in prison. Yes. It'll be some dude just innocuously doing some shit that he does every day, but after a while, you know, dudes start to grumble about it. Be like, man, what's he think he's doing, man? He's always over there in the book box trying to get himself a new pillow, man. What's he doing? Dude's yeah. just minding his own business. Huh. But I don't, yeah, I don't really because, understand that mentality. It's because people like to start shit and it starts entertainment in their head and just yeah. they just want to be a shitty ass, you know? <laughs> yep, exactly. That's how it is, man. You know, I've seen I know exactly what you're talking about, man. Okay, uh, well, was the county segregated in any way? Not really. They were supposed to have feds and state separated, but they actually just threw me in a pile with a bunch of state guys. Um, they kind of the, the first part of it, they kind of kept me in the downstairs section, which is more like, um, what do you call it? You know, like child support violation, old fines, yeah. DUIs and stuff like that. They kind of kept me off in there, um, which I don't I don't mind. I mean, I didn't request it or anything, you know. Uh, it's not like it was PC in the hallway or whatever with the single yeah. man cells. But I guess it, maybe it's because I had a high profile case or something like that. Not yeah, high, but higher than, you know, the other guys there. Um, yeah. Uh, the feds, man, they really dug their heels in. Four months after I got arrested, this kid in Texas named Justin Carter got arrested for the same thing, and he got a lot of media attention. Um, and everybody's going, well, can he really do any time? Can anything bad really happen from this? And uh, at that point, even Philip DeFranco, the YouTuber, I don't know if you heard of him, man. Yeah. Him and, uh, he, he actually put me in one of his videos, and he was like, yeah, something bad can happen to him because this is the first guy this happened to, and he's still in jail, and it was me, you know. And uh, Wow. Then, then all of a sudden the media turned towards, why are these teenagers in jail? Why are they still in there for this? And, man, the government will just never say, we, we raided his house. We checked it out. We don't think he's a threat. It's all good. We did our job. They got to say, we're losing face here, arresting teenagers. Rather than saying, hey, we checked it out, we're going to say he did it. We're about to go hard. We're about to make ourselves look like we just saved somebody. And then two months after I got arrested, the Newtown thing happened, dude. And it was just like a, a once a week, every single every single increase, you know, in these in these bullying Threat, type threats situations. Online, and threats, yeah. exactly. And, um. Uh, so they just really dug in their heels, man. They went completely over the top ballistic. I had two mental evaluations, and both of the doctors said I was not a threat to society, in their opinion. They said that I wasn't a danger to myself. Uh, fully competent to stand trial. You know the standard. Yeah, but you got, you got, see, you got to look at it from a business aspect, too. You know, yeah. like, check it out. If they did check your shit and they said that, guess what? And you did do something, guess what? The damn oh, no. feds is about to get sued and all yep. this shit. So they're just checking their asses just like any other businessman would. And exactly. It's better to. Better safe than sorry. It's better safe than sorry. Punish them a little bit. Uh, five years might have been a little excessive. For the yeah, feds, might, man, that's kind of yeah. a slap on the wrist. You are. Well, I mean, for that. the feds, yes, but at the same time. I was 19. And just, 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 you know, just. After they did all their stuff, they should have realized, okay, let's just give him like a year or two, man. You know, at least we did lock his ass up. And if something like this seriously happens, we're going to be on top of it. That's how it should have went down, man, Definitely. in my eyes. But, yeah, you got to look – ladies and gentlemen, you always got to look at it from a different perspective because nobody wants to get sued. Nobody wants to be plastered on the tabloids that they made a mistake and yep. they're failing our safety. Let them so, go. Yeah. So – there you go, man. But that you know, that's how it goes, man. Someone's got to take a fall in some situations. I've met uh, a lot of people since I got out, man, and started doing my YouTube and stuff. I met a lot of people that said that when they learned about my case back in the day, that they kind of changed the way that they approached online interactions. You know, oh for sure. And I, if I got to be I the scapegoat for it, man, it is what it is. You know, yeah. If, if one yeah. of us got to go down, you know, my whole life benefited from it. I'm married now. I got a baby on the way, man. I'm working a good job. Excellent, I got this YouTube man. thing going on. So like. It all worked out for me. Maybe it wouldn't have worked out that well for somebody else that watched their mouth because of me. So, you know, I'll take it for what it is, man. Yeah, not big man. On, I'm not big on accidents and coincidences. If I got to be the scapegoat, man, I'll take it. Doesn't mean it wasn't excessive, but it, yeah. it was yeah, for yeah, a good Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, I say that, uh, you know, I talk about it all the time in my videos, man. Social media, people are just sending themselves to prison with this shit i'm like what is going on out there man no i know doubt. yours was a little different than what i'm talking about but still someone's no, always watching someone's always watching someone will always tattletale and that's how it goes so watch what the freak you say no in the social media realm man but anyways uh crazy story man feds i hear the feds is structured like uh 
California to an extent when it comes to like segregation and stuff. Was it like that? Did you have to run with your uh, fellow uh, white guys in there and all that uh, stuff? I, I went independent car personally. Uh, the Aryans did. Um, was I supposed to throw that name out there? My bad. No, you're um, good. Well, you say you went to the what? Independent car. You know, like beyond. Like uh, others or something. Yeah, peons. It's where everybody just says we're a gang of the people that aren't in a gang, and we're still a gang, basically. You know, we had a pretty thick independent car at the first place that oh, I was at. So that's that's something that is literally used throughout the system, and the feds, you're guessing, is independent. I mean, it's, it's convict only, if that's what you're talking about. I mean, like no. it, it's it's kind of like you know you got like oh he's he's blood he's crip this dude's independent car he's a peon. Um, obviously, there's pros and cons to being that. You know, these dudes definitely aren't about to crank the car and go crazy for you. Uh, yeah. Unless it's something severe. Uh, and at the same time, uh, there's less rigidity, you know. Like some dude's got to go work out. Some dude's got to follow these rules and that and all that. It's more like, okay, you're not a chomo. Got your paperwork. It's all good. You can sit here, sit here. And if anybody, you know, comes up and tries to mess with one of us, you know, we, we, we talk to them about it. It's just kind of, yeah. I mean, it's basically, in my opinion, it's like a, a, a gang that decides they're not a gang. Okay. Y'all don't got and, peons. That you had to be clicked. Uh, so what? What were you saying about Aryan Brotherhood? Uh, when I first got there, I actually told the when I was at like the intake for the prison, they asked if I was okay with selling outside of my race, and I will just emphasize again how green I was <laughs> when I went in. Man, I didn't know anything about the life, and uh, I told them I didn't care. I was like, Yeah, I don't, I don't care, man. You can oh, put me in whatever shit. cell. Yeah, that was a, a mistake, and I didn't know it. So they put me straight in a cell with two black dudes, which I mean, I couldn't care less. They were cool. I'm saying the dudes, I liked them. We got along for the 40 minutes that I was in there before they stepped out for five minutes and these two guys came in with the, with the markings, you know, and they were like, hey, listen, man. Uh, oh, so two two AB cats rolled up to the cell? Yeah. With yeah, they, the black guys in there? No, nah, no. Nah, they waited until they left. Oh, uh, okay. They, they, they stepped they out. Uh, I was in there by myself. They knocked on the door real respectfully, you know. I was like, come in. And I'm sitting there going, what the hell? I mean, I, I'm not trying to offend anybody, man, but you can kind of tell the like by the looks of them. So I was yeah. already like, oh, yeah. all right, this – uh." This is okay. about to be something else. Yeah, yeah. I was like, here it goes, because uh, yeah. I do wear glasses most of the time. Young, skinny, baby-faced, white guy in prison, yeah. you know, uh, already, you know, but I was about to be like, Google me, dog, Google me. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah. So they came in, and they were like, hey, listen, man, uh, you ain't got no problems or nothing, man, but uh, we, you're new here. This is your first prison bid, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, and they said, look, uh, we're going to need you to go ahead and pack up. We're going to put you in a cell over here with these dudes. Uh, we don't we don't sell outside of our race. Uh they said it a little more roughly than that because you can sell outside of your race, I guess, because they actually put me in a cell with a Puerto Rican and a Mexican. And uh, but they said we don't sell, we don't sell like this, dude. We don't mix it up like this. Uh, and I'm sitting there like, all right. I mean, I, I don't know any differently, you know. I, I don't know that these guys are in a gang or whatever, and I don't know am I going to have to join this gang or you know or dodge them or am I going to get stabbed if I tell them no or whatever. So yeah. I just packed up my bedroll. I was like, all right, man. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that was a wise decision. With. Yeah. No, yeah, man. I'm especially. I just got in there. I'm not about to take on the the brotherhood. You know, the prison I went to, man, wasn't really rocking and rolling. Like I saw one incident that was almost fatal in my whole time there, uh, and I like to have thrown up to be honest. And other than like a near miss with a little tiny, almost sort of race riot thing, man. In general, the place is pretty laid back if you just kind of kept your head down, stay out of the way. I just played guitar. What was this place called? Talladega Federal Correctional Institute. At, Talladega uh, Nights. Yeah, exactly. The one of the prison bands I was in there. We were Talladega Nights with a K. Until we were, until what we were damn Ku Klux Klan? What the hell? I was about hell? to say until we thought about the uh, Imperial Knights of America because the white dudes started coming to the shows more. We're like, nah, man, it was just a oh joke. Oh my like, god! Because we're at Talladega, <laughs> just just more green greenness, you know, just a little yeah, bit more yeah. of the inexperience there. But uh, yeah. man, I just really just kind of kept my head down. I ended up transferring later for the RDAP because uh, I, I RDAP did do, program. Okay. Yeah, I did end up doing throughout my prison bid. I did a lot of things that uh, habits I could not continue on the street that uh i'm not sure you know exactly how i can put it in here but i guess i can vaguely just say that i was doing drugs for a while when i yeah. was in there you know? and um uh, so i actually signed up for rdap knowing i don't get the year off for crimes of violence or threatened crimes of violence you don't get a year off for completing rdap for those who don't know rdap is the residential drug abuse program of the feds it's a very difficult program in most places uh dealing with drug addiction and if you successfully complete it you get a year off of your sentence and so um it's like the only way to get time off in the feds yeah but uh without without flapping without snitching yeah. right yeah but um i signed up for it to try and legitimately get some help you know and, and your uh, charge is 
do, do not allow you to get that one year good time. So right. you're pretty much just doing it just probably just to change up the pace a little bit. Yeah, and I got a transfer for it. I transferred to uh, Mariana, Florida. Oh, okay. Medium, medium high correctional institute, and uh, so I've been at Talladega for like 26 months at that point. I went to Florida, and man, let me tell you, Florida was a bit of a shock for me being from Mississippi my whole life. They got ants down there that will straight kill you. Like everything out there looks like the just the wilderness to me, you know? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. You know, look like bats, and man, it's crazy out there. But um, I didn't know this at the time, but that's an RDAP yard. And it's like a mow yard and stuff, man. And uh, yeah. I mean, I'm chilling. I don't care. You know, I'm not going to bump elbows with them. But at the same time, being 100% real with you, bro, that yard was so much less stressful and just better for my mental health. Yeah, being I mean, there and, and knowing that it was laid back like that. I mean, it was just a, a day camp, you know. Yeah, look, a lot of these sucker ass cats out here won't admit it. But everybody wants to go to a chill yard, dog. Yeah, it was everybody, sweet, dude. I, don't, I don't give a shit who you are, man. You want to go to a chill yard, man. You know. Yeah, those dudes that get to Mariana and be like, man, I can't wait to go back to the pen, man. I'm trying to go back to the pen, bro. Yeah. It's real easy to go back to the pen. Go over there and punch that guy in the face. Go hit yeah, that CO. It, you man. want to go to the pen, then stop, go. Stop griping about it. Stop bluffing, yeah. dog. You know you love it here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, get off the bus like, whoo, look at that yeah. chomo right there. I'm so glad. We're about to kick back now. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was relieved to get there personally, man. I mean, I looked around and I was surprised because I didn't know when I got there. Actually, no, when I was at intake – uh Oh man, thank God! I'm already forgetting the name of these uh, institutions on the inside. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's a good. That's a good thing. The, the gang people, man, I can't remember their name anymore. That's I'm happy about that for real. But the guys that investigate the gangs, the activity in the prison, you know, and, and all that, and they protect the Mo's or whatever they got to do. They came in to our uh, book at like the the R and D in the prison, and they were like, "You just got into Mariana, Florida prison. If if you're here, you are <laughs> either a sex offender, a gang dropout, uh, you." have an extremely short sentence and you're from Florida or you transferred here for RDAP. And I look at the list and I'm the only one from RDAP. None of these dudes are from Florida. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> None of them I got the it. Florida number. So I'm like, oh, shit, man. It's a nothing but mows and rats. So um, it is what it is. You know, I'm like, it I is what it is. I don't, man. I don't rub elbows with them. Then I get there, man. And, and you couldn't cut the tension, man. You couldn't cut the tension with a knife. I got off it and I felt it in the air, man. I got off the bus and I felt it. I was like, this is a little bit more laid back here. I was, I was relieved personally, man. I never got into any nonsense, but I did see that dude get knifed up real bad, and he barely lived. Um, almost getting involved in a race riot that I had nothing to do with. At and one that point. was in the prison before. Yeah, Talladega, Alabama. Talladega. Uh, did AB ever try to get you to come run with him or anything like that? Nah, I, I mean, uh, I was I was pretty good friends with an AC for a little while there because Talladega is so like AC. They they got circle, yeah, Aryan circle. Aryan uh, circle. Different so gang. there's Aryan circle. See, I've heard like four different Aryans now, man. Yeah, there's you know? like Brotherhood, Brotherhood Texas, and then Circle, and then Elite, and uh, what well, they got Nazi Lowriders. There's all kinds of branches of it. Yeah, you know? that's but crazy, man. Talladega, okay. even though they're not supposed to, they kind of bang together because they got really low numbers. And I think that's I think that's a huge no-no, like especially in California or somewhere where they're cutting heads off, you know. But um, I'm pretty sure that's a big no-no in general. But at Talladega, they just bang together. But uh, I was actually pretty good friends with an AC. His name was Brian, man, and I actually really liked him a lot. And those kind of guys just really aren't my style. I'm not like a, I'm not a racist guy, you know, and yeah, uh, which helped me a lot in prison. I speak Spanish pretty well, which helped helped me for sure. And uh, they just don't like that stuff. That's all race traitor to them, you know. So, um, but me and Brian were actually cellies for a little while. And I remember when the door would roll at night, man, he'd be like, "Dude, I'm 25. When I was 23 years old, I arrived at, at Canaan USP, rocking and rolling prison, and I had very few options." Get stabbed, go sit in the in the hole for the next two years, or join the Aryan Circle. And he said, "You can't judge me, bro." He said, "I'm not even on this race stuff, dude. I'm really not. I'm not. But I did what I had to do to survive." Yeah, man, that, that really changed it for me, man. I really respected that dude for talking like that, you know, because I mean, when the door closed, he'd be like, "Man, I'm really not even about this life for real." When I get out, I'm getting the Swazi covered up, dude. I'm getting all these. I'm getting all this stuff covered up, and I'm getting back to my life. This is what I had to do because I was in prison. Yeah, he was probably like, man, this is a good guy to vent to right here, man. You know? Yeah, yeah I guess so. And, and try to save your life a little bit. It sounds like he was trying to, uh, you know, uh, show you the truth behind it a little bit without, you know, screwing it up for himself, you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I never, I never wisdom. peeped about that. I never peeped. You know, they'd have been pissed if they'd have heard something about him covering up his marks, patches, or whatever, you know? Yeah. But, um, no, nah, man, I don't, I don't think that I fit the criteria to be in any of those gangs yeah. you know well i mean if i wanted to be i mean i can almost guarantee my friend someone smaller weaker or whatever than you is a part of the ab somewhere in this country man you know yeah, that's uh, true. you know i don't I, I think uh 
you know. But I understand where you're coming from. I understand where you're coming from. Uh, I looked a lot more like one when I got there, though. I mean, check that out. Is it is it backwards on your screen or just mine? Uh, no, it's just on yours. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, you did look. You, you looked a little more treacherous back then, man. You look like yeah. young young uh, Van Dam or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Van Dam, I ain't got that one before. Hey, look. All right, all right. Look, man. Uh, that's a crazy story. You're out. How long have you been out? This time, I just got out of the halfway house um, like nine days ago this time really? because uh, I got out. I did five months at the halfway house. got an ankle bracelet from the halfway house. They sent me to rehab immediately. I went there for three months. Even though I didn't get caught relapsed or nothing, it was just because of my history. sent me, you know, I was a junk for a long time. Yeah, that's and, um, the program. Yeah. Yeah. So when I got out of rehab, I was out for probably about 40 days, and I smoked some pot and drank a couple beers and got hit for the drug test. And that same judge that hated my guts, dude, and almost broke the gavel when he sent it because he hated me so much and got red in the face when I said my case was a generation gap and all this stuff. Same judge gave me a year <laughs> – Mandatory, I mean, a year in the feds, followed by a mandatory six months at the halfway house. So he basically gave me another year and a half for smoking some pot and drinking some beer. Damn. And, um, he gave a friend of mine, a friend of mine got caught with, uh, like, syringes and failed three drug tests and went on the run from the feds and got six months from that same judge. I smoked some pot. Oh, so he some really he didn't hates me, like dude. you, man. He doesn't make any secret about it. Like, he gave a little speech about it when, uh, when I, he sent it to me the second yeah. time. He was like... I just want to say that I don't think you learned a lesson whatsoever. I think that you're just sitting here saying these words to me because they sound good. You clearly didn't pick up on anything at all. You get out here and you start <laughs> You haven't been working. You're growing your hair out again. I mean, you just look like a degenerate. I'm going to go ahead and give you a year, followed by that six months halfway house. Oh, guy. you sound just like a judge. <laughs> oh, man, you'd be surprised. He, he sounds like a cross between, like, Hank Hill and Stan from American Dad, sort of, man. But, uh, I mean, I'm not mad at him no more, man. You know. The way you that gotta I was stay my away life from before. the alcohol and the weed, man. You got yeah. to, dude. What's the day? The twenty. At least I'm, until I they legalize it, or you get off of probation. You know, uh, right? You got it, man. Because you I seem just like a really a cool sobriety. dude, man. Hey, excellent, man. Full, excellent. full solid year, know, year and three uh, days. Yeah, that's excellent, man. I'm glad to hear that. And you're out the halfway house. You, you're, you're getting back into the uh, uh, scheme, grand scheme of things, man. Uh, you can see I got all this streaming stuff behind I me, man. See, Sorry I about see. the poll and all that. It's for like if I want to do a green screen or whatever, you know. Yeah, you got to save up your money and get that little portable green screen from Elgato has. Have you seen them? They pop up. Uh, it's like a. Uh, oh yeah, I have seen. I've seen they that roll video. up and they roll right down. I got one right here, man. It's the best investment, man. When it comes to green screens, so so easy to put away and. Right now, I got stuff. a rusty pole and a green blanket. Yeah, shit. Back in when upgrade. I first started, I tacked my damn a green sheet that I got from uh, uh, what was it? The damn fabric place. I forget what that place is. Joann's, I think it's what it's called. <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard of that or got them out there, but it's called uh, Joann's. And hey, it worked. Yeah, it worked. It worked. You know. Uh, so don't let that discourage you, man. You're gonna grow, you know. And hopefully, this brings a little traffic your way. Uh, That'd be great, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Tell the people what you got going on now. Anybody, any young cats, gamers out there that might want to follow you or just hear a little bit more of your story? Because, ladies and gentlemen, he didn't tell exactly everything in his story. Because story's wild as shit. All right. Yeah, so, I kind of skimmed the surface. Yeah. So go check out his channel and his story. Go ahead, tell them exactly how they can find you, man. Yeah, if you guys want to check it out, man, my YouTube channel is Josh Pilalt. I know that last name's a doozy. My last name is P-I-L-L-A-U-L-T. Uh, in the last video about me meeting my wife, I got the link to my Discord and my Twitch and all that. So uh, I'd really appreciate any subscribes and follows and stuff like that, man. Uh, the support's been amazing. I went away for a year with 20,000 subscribers, and they still were there when I got out. You know, I did an interview with Silent On Core. Twitch or YouTube? YouTube. Okay, uh, okay. I did an interview with a guy, Silent Core, this famous gamer, when I first got out, and it got like a half a million hits, man. And that's what started everything. Excellent, for me. So, man. A real, real big shout out to him, as always, man. Silent Core saved me. Uh, but you well, guys hopefully are, this this change. Hopefully this goes a little mini viral or something, man. It really changes the game for you and myself, you know. Uh, so that that's cool, man. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna keep everything pinned in the comment section, description, of the video, as always. Uh, his Twitch, YouTube, all that good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. And look, uh, I'm going to follow you too on Twitch, man. You know, I don't follow anybody on Twitch, but I'm going to follow you. And, <laughs> Thanks, uh, man. I need it. Yeah, dog. And uh, what what is Twitch name? Uh, Jay Palalt. Just, Jay just my name, but with no spaces and just uh, no Osh. All Love right, man. That. I appreciate you coming on to the show. It was a pleasure. And ladies and gentlemen, watch what the hell you say. Even Please. if it's a joke in a video game, they will lock your ass up. I'm telling yes, you. Will.